Welcome to the Spice Up series, where we are taking popular guitar songs, this time Wagon Wheel, and making them a lot more interesting to play and also to listen to for your listeners, whoever it is, family, friends, audience, whoever it is. So let's begin, and this is one of the most popular guitar songs, at least in the USA, and it's also based on a simple chord progression of G, D, E minor, C, G, D, C, which repeats in so many other songs. So the stuff that you're going to learn today is going to be useful in many other situations. Let's begin. Feel free to take the techniques that you like and leave out the ones that you don't. The first one is arpeggio picking. And in arpeggio picking, instead of just playing the song in the regular way, and just strumming all the time, what we can do is to break down the chords into individual notes. And we can do that just on some parts of the song. I like to do it especially in the beginning, for example, where it's a bit more chill, because it sounds less full than playing full strums. And here's how it goes. Headed down south to the land of the pine I'm tombing my way into North Carolina The specific arpeggio pattern that works very well in Wagon Wheel is I'm going to state numbers now and they're going to refer to the string numbers and it goes like this first of all bass 3 2 3 4 3 bass 3 2 3 4 3 so what I mean by bass is first we're going to play the bass string of that specific chord so if it's a G the first chord the bass string is on the sixth string and then 3 2 3 4 3 3 2 3 4 3 and then we're moving to D the bass of the D is on the fourth string so bass 3 2 3 4 3 E minor bass 3 2 3 4 3 bass 3 2 3 4 3 and then you got an arpeggio version now also to make it a bit more upbeat, you can combine arpeggio with full strums, then it will sound something like this. And this brings me to the next point, and the next point is using a dynamic approach to playing the song. So instead of playing it all the time in a sort of a flat way with the same kind of energy, what we want to do is to defer, defer the energies, so the, chorus, the choruses should have more energy, the verses should have a bit less energy, and practically how we do it, here's for example one way to do it, is that you play the intro in the first verse in an arpeggio picking, like I showed, which is a bit less energetic, and then in the chorus, so I can see my baby tonight, and then we get to the chorus and then we're going to move to full strum. Rock me, mama, like wagon wheel. Rock me, mama, any way you feel. Hey, hey, mama, rock me. And then when you get to the second verse, for example, so probably you want to use less energies than the chorus, but a bit more than the first verse. So this would be exactly a great way to put this way of combining arpeggio and full strums like I just showed. The next technique that I want to show you is simply using more interesting chords. Sometimes you don't have to use these chords all the time, but for example, if sometimes instead of a D, you're going to use a D slash F sharp, it's already going to sound fuller and also also provide you a more natural bass line that instead of going from G to D to E, E minor, you're going to play a G, F sharp, E minor. And then it's just a descending bass line and it sounds really nice. That's when you're using a D slash F sharp. Another chord that you can use instead of the D sometimes is to replace it with a D sus4. And I really like getting into this sus4 with a hammer on. 
another chord which is really nice to use instead of the regular E minor is to use an E minor 7. Already sounds a lot more colorful. So the regular sounds like this. Or you can. And then instead of the C, I like to switch it to a C at 9. Instead of C. C at 9. Sounds really nice. And then, for example, if you use all of these chords at the same time, it's also convenient because these fingers right here at the bottom stay there all the time. So Notice how these two didn't move. Another thing that I like doing is adding some riffs between the chords. I'm going to give you an a bit of an exaggerated example of playing it too much. But the cool thing is that besides that you can do those a lot of play a lot of riffs if it's the intro or a solo and you want to be a bit over the top. So you can just add one riff here, one riff there, in between the chords themselves while we play the song in between the lyrical lines. Hey, mama rock me. Rock me, mama, like the wind and the rain. Rock me, mama, like a southbound. Hey, mama rock me. Now, all of these riffs are simply based on just noodles that I made up based on the G major and the tonic, which is... And you see it right now on the screen. And this is a great way to practice the open position of the G major pentatonic because it just gives you the motivation because immediately you can noodle it and play riffs with it and make music, make actual music with it. So it sounds really cool and it's a practical way of practicing the scale instead of just playing it up and down. And these were riffs between the chords. Now another thing that I want to show you is if you want to play the song in a rhythmic, more chill, really cool way, so you can add some percussive chucks in between the chords and it sounds like this. Head down south to the land of the pond You can play it in sort of an arpeggio way like I'm doing right now or you can do it more fully Down south to the land of the pine. And the way you do that is with the thumb, you're going to be playing the bass note of the chord, and then you're going to use your nails to just hit the strings. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. On the two and the four of the beat. And then it's sort of almost like you have a drummer and it sounds really good. And the last two that I want to show you is when there is a solo and you really want to take it up a notch and make your listeners remember. So instead of just skipping the solo like I used to do a lot of times when I play by myself and still do. Or instead of just playing an empty verse on the guitar or even a verse with some riffs between the chords, which is pretty cool. You can do two things that are a lot more cool. The first one is to do a harmonica solo, and the second one is to do a scat solo. I'm going to show you examples for both of them. Obviously, learning harmonica is beyond the scope of this short video, but if you have a harmonica, or if you are thinking about getting one, so this might give you an idea for how cool it can sound and how it can add to the performance of the song, even if you just have a guitar. 
So for example, put the solo right after the second verse and it's a great way to do it. Another thing that is super cool and nobody ever does it is add a scat solo. Scat is a term that comes from jazz. It basically just means singing a solo by yourself. And one example of how it can sound like, it can sound you know, just like any other solo in a million different ways, but you just have to learn the scale and sing along with the scale so you will have the notes in your mind. Either the pentatonic scale or the major scale. And then when you're used to the notes, try to improvise. That was a really busy one, but you can also do it in a bit more chill way with less notes. So, my scat solos are not amazing, but this can show you that you can just start. And you can just start and it will, start, it will sound at least decent and it will be cool that you even have the guts to do it in front of listeners. And from my experience, people appreciate it and people really enjoy it. Anyway, so I hope I gave you a couple of cool ideas to make Wagon Wheel a lot more interesting and fun to play. And have a great time. It's going to be a hit on your next campfire or next social gathering. Cheers.